Welcome to Broken Prism Reviews, Season 2, Episode 1, Hex Survival, by Gaetano Leonardi, um, Adventure Mafi, and Super Guma. Those notes will be in the video notes. Here's all the things that come with the game. Over there on the right is the manual on cards, um, the invader mats, the heroes. We'll get into it. So for setup, you'll take the nine invader mats and place them out randomly. It says in the uh, rulebook to shuffle them up and then plug them in however you see fit. So if you want to do like one center one and two on each side and another two on each side or whatever the math turns out to be, you can. So kind of like Twilight Imperium where you can set it up different every time, set it up in different ways, gives you a lot of replayability and it's pretty exciting. I'm going to struggle with this for a little bit because I'm doing it one-handed and the secret I have not told you is that I am not uh, left-handed. <laughs> Uh, sort of like a Princess Bride reference. So I am right-handed, so it's harder for me, but if you had both hands available, or even another player, this would go a little quicker. But once you get it all plugged in, you're pretty much set there. you got different colors for your start portals. Traps and bonuses are all randomly assigned. The next part of setup are the heroes. So you'll shuffle those and play, set them out randomly. We're going to do a two-player game, so player one gets three and player two gets three. You'll find the matching zombie, and that goes with it. As you can see, they're color-coordinated, so the orange uh, bull. The black stand is for your, your hero, and then there's a red stand, which I'll show you right here, for your zombie. Start as a hero, but when you lose your three hearts, you die, and you come back as a zombie. Or if you get infected and get up to three infected hearts, you'll come back as a zombie. The secondary color in the top left is your rebirth portal. The main color is your starting portal. That shows that here on the rulebook card. Be sure to look at that because it makes more sense that way. Here's the different heroes you can be, um, and they're matching zombies. It's color-coordinated, so pretty easy to figure it out. Red sandies for zombies, black for heroes. You also get the three hearts for each player, so each hero gets their own hit point tracker there, and you hold on to the zombie and use it later. You also start with a chance card for the first turn, You'll play that chance card, and I'll show you that here in a bit, but each hero gets one to start with, shuffled randomly from the deck. I'm going to set that aside as a draw pile. So first turn, you'll flip over that card and do exactly what it says. This one says let the opponent move your guy two tiles. So the other player will choose to pick up my Moffy, that's who that character is. The purple guy is going to say move him these two over here. There's some strategy in how you're going to do that with chance cards. In the rule card, there's also explains that movement is in any direction, but one tile. So you can move one adjacent tile per turn, but when you move, you also draw a card. So an example of that, my Moffy here, he's going to move one tile and draw one card. This card says you immediately lose one health because the skeleton chomps your ankles. So take one of my hit points and throw it away. Not a good start, but that goes in the discard pile. So next up, this other player. So you take turns moving one hero at a time. He's going to move one, but he's got a two times movement, so he'll move two. He'll draw a card. His says, stab in the heart. Now it shows you the attack and one area. I uh, did that wrong by attacking someone that's not in the area, but make sure you do it right. Here I'll show you. Here's the symbol. This shows you attacks. This shows you events. And there's another one for defense. There it is. So those are the different symbols. Attack, event, or defense. And you can play them at different times according to the rule card. Attacks can be moved during your turn. Defense can be used at any time. And events you pretty much use right away. It also shows you, and I'll scroll down here a little bit, that the distance in which you can use those cards is those numbers the number of tiles in the bottom right corner. So that's the action radius. <clears throat> and you also it shows you there you have a maximum number of cards per number of red hearts you have. So zombies can't have action cards. But it shows you here the uh, attacker defense has a maximum action range expressed by the number of tiles. So I'll show you that here. card. There's one, here's three, so you can do that one up to three away and just follow that rule set for that. Attack or defense, I can do that at any time, and it's one. So, when you lose your last health, you're going to bring your three zombie hearts in, and move your zombie in, take this guy off, put him on the portal he begins with. If someone else is on that portal, 
Just place it somewhere adjacent, but it goes there for now. And that's a basic example of how the game goes. So today we were looking at Hex Survival, again by Gaetano Leonardi of the uh, Adventure Mafia and the Supaguma. As I saw, showed you in the uh, video, it's going to be played two or even up to six players because you can each get a hero and a zombie or you can have a group of them. It's a pretty thrilling game because you get to take one move action with one of your heroes per your turn, then the other person does. So back and forth, you're trying to uh, use those attack cards, eat each other up, and then once they become a zombie, kill their zombie off and be the last dude standing. Um... Lots of uh, replayability with that because you can relay out the map. You play different players. Um, just had a really great time with this game. It's been featured on the Game Crafter for a while. As you know, I talk about the Game Crafter quite often in my videos. The Game Crafter games are all independent designers that are working really hard to make it in the industry. As you can see, I'm kind of into games. I've got a couple shelves here of games. So I take this whole business seriously. Um, it's just great to see independent designers working on ideas, new play styles, new new things that people aren't, aren't doing out there. So with every Game Crafter game, whenever you buy a copy of that, you're supporting someone's dream. So I recommend you pick this game up. It's definitely on my approve list. I like to get together with my gaming group and bust out new games that someone's coming with me next time we go. And I hope you uh, enjoyed the show and check out some of my other videos. We know we're now in Season 2. Um, started this last year and want to keep it going. So thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. Look forward to talking to you later. Thank you for checking out a United Geeks Network family member. If you enjoyed it and are looking for other online media with a geek culture slant, head over to unitedgeeksnetwork.com where you will find the Game Crafter Official Podcast, a bi-weekly podcast dedicated to the tabletop game print on demand company, The Game Crafter and its growing community. The United Geeks Network. You can broadcast your geekiness at unitedgeeksnetwork.com.